Okay, I'm gonna show you how to change your long head of bicep strengthening work from concentric to eccentric. And this is important for those people who are really acute or really sore from a diagnosed long head of bicep tendinopathy or tendinitis. And they simply find that doing concentric work is too heavy for them, it's too hard, and they need to do the eccentric work for the tendon in that acute phase or that sort of subacute phase where they're trying to build some strength to get it better, less painful, stronger. Now, when you're doing, say, a movement like scaption, which is this direction for your long headed bicep, a lot of the time, even with the lightest weight, that's two kilos, even with one kilo, maybe even with your arm, it's too much, okay? So for those sort of people who are trying to lift up there, the concentric work and it's too much, they want to just do the eccentric work, and I've got a tip to change that. And I'm going to do it in two different ways, one for the top range and one for the bottom range. We'll start with the top range first. Usually, if you're doing a scaption, so if you're going, remember, scaption is a direction which is about sort of 30 to 40 degrees out that way. It depends on the person, but it's certainly not a front raise straight in front, and it's certainly not a lat raise out there, okay? What we're aiming for is a direction that is out around, if you took sort of say 12 o'clock, you're going around about sort of 10.30, if it's your left arm, around about that 30, 40 degree mark, and you're lifting up that way. Now, that will directly load you in the front. It's gonna work on a bit of supraspinatus, it's gonna work on a bit of long-handed bicep. Now, that's a long lever, and the people we find that difficult is because it's a long lever. Even with a little weight out there, that's gonna be hard. Okay, obviously when it drops down, it gets a little bit less, you know, not as hard because the lever is lower. So, what you do is ditch the weight for the standing exercise. You go for a band. Now, good thing about the band is that it's easier as it goes down. Okay, I just like this using this rather than the weight because you can also vary it depending on, you have to buy like all these different weights, you can vary the band. Tension, even if you just get one band, you can change the tension of it to increase the weight or decrease the weight. So it works better for those people who have a bit more, need a bit more variability. Um, than just the weight. So, what you do, you gotta think, I wanna do eccentric loading, which means I wanna do strengthening work on the way down for this exercise. Now, what I don't wanna do is the concentric part with a long lever. So the way we get around that is we do the concentric part with a very short lever, okay? So instead of lifting from there, now remember you've got to, you can either put your foot on it or tie it to something down there, but you need a bit of tension at the bottom. So when I'm right at the bottom there, I need a bit of tension, okay? So instead of doing that and lifting up, which you'll find quite hard, that gets harder and harder as it goes up, what you do, and this sounds really simple, but this is pretty basic stuff, just go into a bicep curl there. Okay, I want you then to lift up your elbow at that point there. So there's your short lever. Now you should be able to do that, okay? If not, you lighten the band, make it a little bit lighter, so you lift up, things a little bit easier. You're still going out on that scaption angle, okay? So you're not sort of forward and you're not out here, you're in there. But I've got a short lever now. So when I shorten up the bicep, it's easier on that long head tendon, all right? Then when I get to this point, I'm gonna straighten that arm out until I get to my elbow straight, and there's my maximal load, and then from there, then I do the eccentric phase down. Now this is, you know, getting pretty technical, but pedantic, but for those people who go, I desperately need eccentric work done on that tendon because the concentric work I was doing before is not working, my pressing is not working, so I need to change it. And if you're one of those people, then try this, where you just basically minus out the long lever concentric phase lifting up, the long lever phase starts there and then goes down again, okay? For those people who's like, okay, that even that hurts a little bit, you may have to give an assistance like a sprinter one where you lift up, hold it out, and then put the load on and then come down, okay? Now, of course, it depends on the person's pain. You don't really want too much pain with this. If anything, you wanna be always staying below a three or four out of 10, but if you're in the acute phase, realistically, you probably don't want any pain with this until you've been down the track and conditioned it. But make sure that you are trying to always stand at 30 degree angle, all right? You're always keeping the elbow bent, locked at 90, so the movement comes from here, but it's shortened, and then, Try and keep that same angle and straighten it out. Then, when you lower down, the other tip I want you to make sure is don't let that shoulder pop forward. So when it's from there, you keep that shoulder back and then slowly drop down. You'll notice as the band gets less, it gets easier and easier and easier. So for those people who are pretty good up here, 
bit vulnerable down here when they sort of get the point where they go, oh, it hurts a little bit down there. It's getting easier, it goes down. That's why the band's good for you. So if you're one of those people who, you know, one, you don't have weights, but two, the band is kind on you and you like that sort of, you're stronger here but you're weaker down there, then do that option. If you're the reverse, if you are still wanting eccentric loading, but at this point you are sore and you are stronger down here, then this is what you do. You go back to the weight, but you do it on the ground. So what I want you to do for this one is exactly the same movement, and you're going to use gravity as your friend. So you don't have to do the um, concentric parts. You're not going to go from here and lift up like that. Okay. What you're going to do is similar to the band. You're going to cheat. All right, elbows at 90 degrees, you're gonna just press it up. All right, so you're gonna use a bit of pec and a bit of tricep, a bit of shoulder to try and help out that bicep tendon. But then you gotta think, okay, if I'm in this line here, now holding it there is easy, all right? I'm gonna not drop down through there, all right? I wanna be still on that angle over here, all right? So if I, I'm not gonna lift up from that, that's too hard. So you go, bend your bicep, press it to the ceiling. Now you gotta think, where's my angle? I wanna keep my elbow straight, so I know that I'm going to be loading here at the bottom. It's easy here. As I drop down through that eccentric phase, the lengthening phase, right, the eccentric phase, it's getting harder, okay? Harder and harder and harder. But if I'm the person who is weaker at the top and stronger on the bottom, this will suit you better, okay? To the point where you make sure you don't just drop into the floor, all right? You've got to make sure that this weight is appropriate, that you can go from here all the way down and slow and just hold, 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 hold it to the bottom, then drop, then bring it in, push it back up to the ceiling. Let's try that again. So thinking, shoulder down, if you watch my shoulder, I'm not letting it pop up, right? I've got to keep my shoulder blade flat on the ground, lower it down, lower, 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 and then just really see if you can not let it drop fast. Keep the speed consistent to there. All right, and that's the crucial part. A lot of people go from here and just go, oh, and just drop it. You need that strengthening here for that tendon. Okay, and you've got to make sure you also watch your form. Don't from there go and let it do that. All right, it's going to give it problems. So that phase, if you can nail that phase there and hold it and almost go to the point, I can hold it there, you're going to get a lot more strengthening and a lot more effective for that long head of bicep. Plus, with these things, your super spinazer is going to love you as well. Okay, so if you've got a bit of a double whammy where you've got long headed bicep and you've got super spinazer, so make sure that shoulder's down and back, then doing these ones is going to be great. You just got to choose which ones you know, suits you better. You might find you like both of those. If you've got sort of not too many, you've just got sort of an even amount of weakness going all the way through, it's not sort of more at the top or more at the bottom. Try both of them because you'll get the benefits of the strengthening at the top and the strengthening at the bottom. And that is going to help you on your journey of getting that tendon a little bit better through that eccentric loading, that lengthening phase, to get a past the acute phase and go, okay, it's better, it's not as sore, then I need some real strengthening. And then you can find you can do the concentric stuff a little bit better. Again, when you go back to that concentric work, you're still going, you're not lifting up and using momentum, you're still going nice and slow with this, okay? And once you can nail that, you'll probably find that when you go back to pressing type movements and fly type movements, it's feeling a lot better. That's all for this week. See you next time.